Hi, I'm Morgan Dreamus with RT Book Reviews, and today I'm joined by Paula Quinn, who is a historical romance author of the Scottish variety. You write delicious heroes, Highlanders. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so super excited because right now you're finishing up your series, your Children of the Mist yes. series with Conquered by a Highlander. Mm -hmm. Every single one of these books in the series received a top pick, which mm. means it is an outstanding series Thank that we can you. recommend to everyone. Um, can, for those who haven't um, started the series yet, can you give a little background about how you came into these books and what they can expect? Yes. Um, the, uh, my whole Scottish series really started with Lair of the Mist, uh, Colin McGregor and Kate Campbell. And, um, you know, in history, the McGregors and the Campbells were enemies for a long time. Um, and uh, we just started with them. I told the story of the McGregor prescription, their history through Cullum, um, my favorite book <laughs> out, of, out of all of them. Authors say they don't have a favorite, but I you do. know they have I'm a favorite. I'm telling you right now, that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> He's my favorite hero. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. I feel, I feel so bad what my other character's saying that, but they all know it too. <laughs> <laughs> you can't keep secrets no, from them. No, <laughs> and then uh, and then we did um, a Highland and Ever Surrenders, which is the Grants. The Grants and the McGregors in history were very close. Uh, the Grants hid the McGregors and you know um, defied the realm for them. So I want I really wanted to keep that um, the clan the whole thing true to um, what really happened, and um, that was the story of um, Graham Grant. And then uh, then I did the Children of the Mist which uh, features the grown children of Cullum and Kate and Graham and Claire. And um, it was just, it was like a little roller coaster of these getting to know my favorite characters, children. Mm -hmm. um, I really loved, loved doing it. Um, do you want to know what the first one? I mean, uh, well, yeah. Well, I think I think what's specifically interesting about this series mm -hmm. is, like you're saying, you're staying really true to history. Mm -hmm. And during this time, there's so much political maneuverings. Yeah. There's betrayals after betrayal. There is mm -hmm. going against your king, or or are you going to be yeah, on their right. side? There's you know the English component against the sky. I mean, there's literally you mm -hmm. can't get away from from the and politics. The whole religious Religion, and religion was exactly. so big then, and yeah. so maybe maybe you could talk about how that goes throughout your mm -hmm. series, and mm -hmm. and what what uh, role the politics in in real life politics mm -hmm. plays throughout your series. Yeah, um, in Radish by Highlander, that was book one uh, of the Children of the Mist series. That was um, I and again I I love to keep real historical figures in in all my books. So um, we had King King Charles, we had King James, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and King James was a Catholic ruler in um, a Protestant country. So he had put his uh, firstborn, who really wasn't, uh, Davina, put her in an abbey. And uh, she was raised in a Catholic abbey to be his heir. Mm -hmm. um, and she was hidden there. No one knew about it. And then Rob rescued her. So it was a real damsel in distress type of thing. <laughs> Another thing, all my heroes have honor, the highest caliber of honor. I was raised with that. I grew up with tales of King Arthur mm -hmm. and chivalry and everything. So all my characters will always be very honorable men. Um, and the next uh, book was uh, Seduced by Highlander, which uh, featured Tristan McGregor. Uh, I had a little heart throb. Is it okay that I'm like in <laughs> love with my own, my own characters? <laughs> well, if you if you fall in love with them, you know your readers are going I do. to. So. I fall in love. I fall in love with all of them. Um, he was uh, he was the um, prodigal son, the rake. And uh, who kind of didn't fit in, um, and then because of some traumatic events in his life, um, lost his honor, and had to find it again. And he found it in uh, the McGregor's new um, enemies, the Fergusons. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was the whole, you know, he had to go there and find his honor again. And um, it, it was that was a fun book for me to write. He was an easy an easy character. Tristan kind of just sailed right through. And he knows, you knew exactly yeah. where he was and where he was going. Well, I didn't really, but, uh, and he, he hid it from me for a long time. You know, um, I always say he's my knight in rusty armor. <laughs> and uh, and the heroine Isabel kind of like polished it up for him. And he didn't oh. even realize that it needed polishing up. I didn't realize it till I started writing the book. And he kind of opened up a little bit more. And then he became, like I said, very easy. Um, the third book uh, features Connor Grant, um, and that's um, the son of 
Graham from Highland and Never Surrenders. And again, um, there was this whole Catholic Protestant mm -hmm. war going on in England at the time. And um, uh, the her hero is Connor Grant, the heroine is Mary McGregor, who is uh, the daughter. So bringing, um, them, the, yeah, bringing them bringing together. Them together. <laughs> and they were childhood sweethearts, which is a, a big favorite for me because I was married to my childhood sweetheart. So oh. I really, really understood where they were both coming from. They could hate each other and forgive each other anything, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time. And that's kind of what, what happened with them. She stayed in Scotland. He became a captain in the English Protestant army. And she was very, very, um, you know, staunch Catholic. And that was her belief. And she thought that he um, betrayed his faith and he mm -hmm. really hadn't. And they had to find each other again. So that was fun for me to write. She was tough. She was tough. Um, there were days when I didn't like her so much, but I, wa I try to keep um, emotions as real as they can. Just because I don't like how she's behaving, I think that she really would have behaved that a certain way. So um, that was, it was, they're all fun to write. <laughs> and then the last book, which it holds a very special place in my heart, is Conquered uh, by a Highlander. Number one, because it's the last in the series featuring Colin's children. Um, and uh, I love Colin. He, um, I introduced him in Ravished by a Highlander, and there's a scene at the end of Ravished where, you know, he's battle-born. They all, all the books have um, a separate title. Ravished by a Highlander was firstborn because Rob McGregor was the firstborn, and there's another um, reason, which I won't say, because then I'll ruin, <laughs> I don't want to give any spoilers away. And then um, Seduced by a Highlander uh, is also The Prodigal Son. Um, uh, Chained by a Highlander is Alas the Third, um, and it's A-L-A-S-S, -S, meaning, because Mary didn't want to be a girl. She had these brothers that are all tough and sword wheels and guys, and she wanted to do that too, so she wasn't so happy about being a girl and being told what she couldn't do. That was hard for her. Um, and then the third, and then the fourth, I'm sorry, Conquered is Battleborn, and that's Colin. Um, and as I, I was saying, in Ravish, there's a scene at the end of the book where he finds pistols because the pistols started to uh, come into England mm -hmm. back then at that time. And um, he, fires, he fires it. He doesn't really like it. He thinks it's a cowardly weapon, you know, because these guys went right in and they were, you know, sword fighting. But he fires it and smoke comes out and he kind of blows on it and then puts it in his belted plaid. So it was kind of like a cowboyish little thing for me. <laughs> I just loved it. I loved Colin from boys will be day boys, one. Right? Yeah. <laughs> day one, I loved him. Uh, so I had to put him um, into Tame Dry Highlander also. He has a, a, a good part in that. And then I was so excited about doing his, his own story. And uh, it went too quick. You know, it was over too quickly. I, I loved writing every page. Um, and you know, it was bittersweet ending it. Every mm -hmm. every author likes to end their book, <laughs> you know. But this was bittersweet for me because I knew that this is the end of a really big chapter, and it was an end of a chapter in my life as well. Um, but you know, new things are coming. <laughs> well, you know, you know, I'm going to have to ask about the new things that are mm -hmm. coming. What is on the horizon now that we've got okay. this series wrapped yes. up? Yes. Um, well, right now I'm working on an ebook novella, A uh, Christmas Highlander, which uh, features Finley Grant. Mm -hmm. um, he was in Ravished by a Highlander, and I fell in love with him, and a lot of my readers fell in love with him. And I base all my characters on real life um, faces. Mm -hmm. So, if, can I say someone's name? Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. please, of course. <laughs> okay, good. Um, I saw. Celtic Thunder and saw Keith Hark and the blonde, mm -hmm. just angelic. I mean, ugh. And he became, he became Finn Good. for me. And um, so I'm doing that now. I'm working on that. Uh, that's going to be an ebook, Christmas, Kem Lachlan. Um, and that's, I would like to also speak about Kem Lachlan. That's my, uh, that's the place in Sky where all the McGregors live. And that was uh, the fortress that Colin built in Laird of the Mist. And that's where they all live, they all go back to, because of the prescription, the prescription with the McGregors um, was a law against them that um, tried to abolish them completely. They didn't, they weren't allowed to have their name. Um, you I know, know their, their plaid is taken away, which is a big deal every, because that's yeah, their identity. Every, everything was mm -hmm. taken away. Um, their name, uh, they weren't allowed to 
uh, congregate more than four. They weren't right. allowed to carry any weapons. This was all in the earlier times, but it, you know, it, it didn't end until 1774. So uh, throughout my books, after uh, Lair of the Mist, it kind of ends a little bit for them with mm -hmm. the new king, and then it, it's picked up again at the end of Conquered by a Highlander with um, the new king, William. He, he started it up again. So they had a lot of laws against them, and um, they all went back to Camlochlin to live. And to me, it's just, it's a big fortress in a beautiful vale in uh, Camasunnery Bay, Scotland. Um, and uh, I even have paintings for sale. Uh, a, a, one of my fantastic readers' husbands is an artist and was so moved by Laird of the Mist that he painted the castle. So it's really amazing. Wow. Uh, yeah. So the, what's on the horizon now is a new series called Highland Airs. Uh, we're still we're staying with the McGregors, mm -hmm. and they're going to be um, Kate and Colm's grandchildren, children of Rob and Davina from oh Ravish. That is amazing. So we're literally getting third generation. Yeah, you're getting third generation. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I promise you won't see any old, <laughs> any old old characters. You know, they'll be orph orphan in France or something. But uh, yeah, because you know we don't want that. But. Um, yeah, we're going to have um, children, Robin Davina's children from Ravished, Tristan and Isabel's children, all grown. And I've got them all. I've got the whole family tree laid out. It must be so fulfilling as an author to know that you have readers that are following you not only yeah. through you know si you know siblings mm -hmm. or, or cousins and mm -hmm. things of that nature, but also through generations, through children yeah. of children of you yeah. know, and and that's so exciting because you know that we love your characters mm -hmm. and to get Thank to you. get their stories and then to know kind of almost like what their heritage is mm -hmm. because you get that next yeah the next a lot of, a lo I get so many emails um, from people that that love the McGregors because they've been with them for so long. And, um, you know, please don't stop. And I, w I don't want to stop writing a bit. If I'm going to write about Highlanders, they are going to be McGregors and Grants. And, um, you know, my dream when I started to write these, these books was, um, like I said, to let the, get the prescription out there and let people know what happened with the McGregors. And I used to tell, you know, my best friend, if I just get one McGregor to know that I did this, and I ended up um, hearing from the current Laird, the chieftain of the McGregor's wife, wrote me and, and had read um, Ravish by Highlander and loved it and invited me the next, if I ever go to Scotland, which I haven't been, um, you know, to meet her and her husband, whose name is Malcolm Cullum. <laughs> I know. That is, it's, that is it's so absolutely amazing. amazing. And also, it is. it's here here in America, of course, we have some great history that, mm -hmm. that we can call on. Oh, yeah. But I mean, in Scotland, when it's they're old. talking about, you know, their their history, they're yeah. talking about so many centuries yeah. and, and really, you know, overcoming so much, so especially much. for their family. I mean, I think Scotland is, is so, it's so steeped in blood and honor. Mm -hmm. um, these people fought for their land. They fought for their freedom. Um, they they did things uh, that I don't even know if you know people would do today in America. They right. really really they fought and they went in you know think of Braveheart. They really did that. Yeah. They fought sword to sword. These well, men you, were brave. And you don't shy away from that at all. No. You show you show what they have gone mm -hmm. through. It's it's almost like yeah. um, it it it's a very difficult thing to read, but at the same time, mm -hmm. it's also very fulfilling mm -hmm. because you understand the sacrifices right. that they make, exactly. and it really it makes you kind of fall in love with the character mm -hmm. just that much more. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it for me, you know, mm -hmm. doing research. I mean, I when I was writing Light of the Mist, I cried. I, it took me almost three years to write that book because I cried so much <laughs> reading about their history and, and feeling so uh, in touch with them. And uh, with all the books, I want, I want to give it as much of a real feel mm -hmm. and still stay into uh, that escapism, that romance. You know, I still, but like you said, you, know, you need a little, a little hardship to, un to appreciate yeah. the good. Yeah. So, you know, and... Uh, um, the kings, um, they're all very, everything's very, very important to each book and the setting. Um, Scotland, to me, I think in Laird of the Mist, I really um, try to show that the, the men and the women are really part of that land and neither can exist without the other because Absolutely. there was such a fight for what they, especially with the McGregors, there was such a fight to survive. And they did, you know. Uh, Sir Walter Scott wrote the poem, um, 
uh, McGregor's Despite Them. It's, it's, I have it on my website if anyone wants to read it. And they're a defiant, rebellious, very strong clan. And if any of them are watching, I love you all. Huzzah. <laughs> Well, I think I think with that, what a, what a perfect way to say thank you so well, much for being you. here, and and much as you love the McGregors, we love reading about them oh, thank you. just yes, as much. I'm so happy to hear uh, that. So, Children of the Mist, um, all four books have been top picks, and I highly suggest you go out and get them right away. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.